Time Fighter now has some splashes of colors, so let's give it some animation to direct the user's attention to the most important element of the game. That is the hit me button. Animations give visual emphasis to elements and help you direct the user's attention. When it comes to animation, the most important rule is to use it where and when it matters, not simply because you can. Let's add some animation to the hit me button to make pressing it a little more exciting and fun. To get started creating animations, you need to create a new animation file. So right click on the res folder, select new animation resource file. Set the resource type to be animation and for the file name, give it the name bounce. Click OK to create this file. By creating this file, Android Studio creates an anim resource directory. This directory is what we'll use to store all our animation files. You'll notice that we have bounce.xml located inside of it. The initial file contains existing code and that the most important thing there is the set attribute. This defines a set of transformations that occur over the course of this particular animation. More than one transformation can happen during the animation and that each element of the set will run in parallel. For this particular animation, you will only have one transformation. Replace everything from the opening set tag to the closing set tag with the following. In the set tag, we added two attributes, fill after and interpolator. The fill after being set to true means that your view, in this case the button, will not return to its original position before the animation. Instead, it will remain at the final position at the end of the animation. The interpolator defines the acceleration curve for the animation. In this case, you set it to the predefined bounce interpolator, which comes with Android. If you want, you can create your own interpolators too. The scale tag defines your bounce animation. As the tag indicates, you'll be carrying out a scale transformation where you'll scale the button up and down to make it look as if it is bouncing. The attributes for the scale tag define how the scaling occurs and for how long. The duration attribute defines how long the transformations will take. The values are in milliseconds, so the animation will be two seconds long. The from X scale and the from Y scale attributes specify the starting scale for the animation. Here you indicate that the animation should start at twice the width and height of the button. The pivot X and pivot Y values indicate the pivot point or the origin for the animation. For example, you could have the animation occur from the center of the view, or you could have it occur from the top left or bottom right corner, etc. The values for these attributes are in percentages where 0% for both would be the top and left and 100% for both would be the bottom and right. Both values are set to 50%, which indicates that you want to start from the center. The 2x scale and the 2y scale attributes indicate the final scale value for the transformation. Here you want the button to go back to its original scale, so you set both attributes to 1. That sets up the animation, and you can use this animation for any view in your application, not just the Hit Me button. Now it's time to apply the animation. For that, you have to go back to your Kotlin code in mainactivity.kt. Modify the onset click listener for the Tap Me button in OnCreate as follows. Originally, you just called increment score from here. Now, before you do that, you load the bounce animation from the resources file and then set the animation on the button first. Run the app and look at that. We have animation.